How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus. I did this video before, but um just felt led in my spirit to go over it again. And I think because we are so close in regards to where we're at on the prophetic timeline that God has wanted me to um speak about some of these things that he has he has had me to speak about before. Um, just to bring it to light for those who may have never heard of it or just to bring it in remembrance to those who um, have heard of it or have heard me preach about this in regards to um, what we're talking about today. And that is Daniel chapter eight, primarily verses 23 through 25 and a better understanding of it and how it ties in with end times Bible prophecy. So we want to start in verses 23 and 24. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper in practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Now, there's a lot of uh, speculation about what does he, what does this mean when he says that the Antichrist who will eventually be possessed with the, uh, with Satan himself and become the son of perdition what is he talking about? What is it talking about when it says that he will understand dark sentences? So let's look at that. Let's get a biblical understanding. All we have to do is allow ourselves to be led by the spirit of love. I will incline my my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. So dark sayings, dark sentences, they are tied in with parables. So when we go back up here and we see that he understands dark sentences, he understands the knowledge and wisdom of God. He understands the knowledge of wisdom of God. He understands how things work. He understands how things operate. He understands the elements. This is what it's saying. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. So Satan understands these things, but they do not dwell in him. He only uses them when they benefit himself to exalt himself as God, to give subtlety to the simple. Hmm. The beast was more subtle, subtle. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Satan, when he was Lucifer, he was in the wise counsels of God. To understand a proverb or parable and the what interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. And what is it? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when Satan was Lucifer, he had the fear of the Lord. So that was the beginning of knowledge. And then God gave him um, everything else that he had given him in regards to understanding. So when the Antichrist steps on the scene, he, when he understands dark sayings, dark sentences, he will understand Proverbs. He will understand the interpretation of proverbs he will understand knowledge and wisdom and how things work and operate 
as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. He's talking about Peter. How uh, things uh, that Peter, I mean, excuse me, um, Paul. Things that Paul taught, they were hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So this isn't going to be Satan so much. His destruction is already in place. He's going to understand um, things that are hard to be understood. He's going to make it plain for the people. That's why they're going to worship him because of his knowledge. That's why I keep on giving you all that warning about getting sucked into these different YouTube channels and these are uh, Facebook prophets for profit <laughs> that um, are dropping all this knowledge, but they're not leading you to the true Messiah. They're just leading you to more knowledge. It doesn't, it does no good to have all this knowledge, but you're, but it's not leading you to Christ. It's not having you to examine yourself. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the fear which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The serpent was more, more subtle. subtle. Again, if this was just a, a snake, then why was, he, why was he so wise? Satan became the beast. He became the beast. That's why first he was named Lucifer. Then he became Satan, the adversary the destroyer, the accuser of the brethren. He became that. Again, if this was just a snake walking around with legs, then why would he be more subtle? Why would he have all this knowledge and wisdom to be able to have know how trade and stuff goes as it talks about in the book of Ezekiel and Isaiah. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You got to go back in ancient history and find out what the serpent represented. The ancient serpent was the ancient worm who was said to be the oldest creature on earth. The serpent also in Egypt was a sign of uh, knowledge, wisdom. It was also a sign of, um, of uh, immortality. They had it on their on their on their little uh, headdress that we see that's famous. It was a symbol of protection, being protected by the wisdom of how to survive in the world, how how things operated, and how to overcome and navigate through the underworld into the afterlife to be resurrected again. That's why I talked about. Uh, Jesus had to be lifted up just as the serpent was lifted up in, in the wilderness with Moses. So now we want to look at Daniel 8, 25 and through his policy. Also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace, this false peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, Christ, but he shall be broken without hand. Light work. So let's see what this, uh, what this policy is and through his policy, let's get a better understanding of that. So policy is way of management management. So through his way of management, through his practice of government, through his political organization, through his civil administration, through his state, through his administration, through his government, his one world government, through his plan of action. Through his written insurance agreement. Y'all hear me talk about this. Nasara, Gesara, the what we call the global reset. Some of you are not familiar with the, with Nassara and Gassara. Go look it up. I got videos on it. I got a whole playlist on it. Nassara slash Gassara slash the global reset slash the new world order. This is, that's what it is. His written insurance agreement through his contract.
go down. Um, so through all these things, ultimately through his government, through his government, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hands. So let's see what this craft is talking about. He shall cause craft to prosper. What is it talking about? He shall cause power. He shall cause physical strength. He shall cause might. He shall cause skill to increase. He shall cause dexterity, art, science, mental power, spiritual power to increase. He shall cause trade to increase. He shall cause the building to increase, the building of things to increase. What else we got? He shall cause the exercise of craft and how things are built to increase. So how's he gonna how's he gonna do this? Let's go back and read it one more time. Um yeah. And through his government also he shall cause power, mental power. He shall cause strength to prosper in his hand what is this craft that is talking about besides what we just read how's he going to do it through technology so what is technology we know through technology that they can communicate um two different people in two different places through telekinesis and all these different things they do it through technology Elon Musk, you know, with his um brain implant, brain wave, or brain uh brain net that goes into the brain, all this other stuff. That is through technology. Witchcraft. It just in the form of this uh this wicked technology. Technology itself isn't bad. But when you start doing the things that they're doing, then it's witchcraft. Me using this right here, this is not witchcraft. But when you take it and you use it for something evil, that is witchcraft. And the same way a person can take the word of God and they can use it for righteousness or they can take it and they can they can use it to manipulate people out, out their money. That would be witchcraft. Because you're conjuring up spells then. Um, let's go look at technology technology is what a discourse or treatise on an art or the arts a systematic treatment of an art craft or technique art skill craft and work method system and art a system or method of making or doing same thing we're just reading also means what weaving or fabricating www the world wide web awesome it's just the root of it is to weave to fabricate so let's go look up um techno because ology is a study of let's look up techno Techno, as you see, word forming element meaning art, craft, skill, later technical and technology, um, art, skill, craft and work, method, system, and art, a system or method of making or doing, saying the same thing. So that's the, this is the root of it also. Which means what? To weave. Satan's web, the world wide web. People are trapped in, in knowledge. They don't know how to get out. They're trapped in the matrix to fabricate. Interesting. It forms all or part of architect, 
you know, in Freemasonry, the great architect, context. If you don't understand the context of something, then guess what? You're lost. You're lost in the actual meaning of what you're reading. You're lost in the web. Subtle, interesting. <laughs> then we read that. Now Satan was more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. <laughs> he was more slick with his words. He understood how things worked. Look at this. A net, a snare. Some of you know the scriptures that talk about that. It is the hypothetical source of evidence for its existence. It's provided by T-E-K-S, which is to weave, to fabricate, to make, make wicker or waddle framework. He fashions, constructs, also means carpenter. Hmm. Be busy. God asks uh, Satan in the book of Job where you came from. Walking up and down and to and fro in the earth. In it. Look at that. Web. Net. Web. Net. You see it all ties together? Art. Literally, builder. To join. Unite. Build. Nimrod. The same thing. Nimrod brought people together because of his advanced, what we call uh, technology that he had, his advanced, his advanced understanding of knowledge of the dark arts of how things operated. He got that knowledge from the fallen um, angels, from the gods. He must have found something. You know, there's, different, um, there's different teachings and beliefs of how he got it, but either way, he still got it. And he used it to his advantage to draw people together to uh, build this tower, which was not just a, a tower, but it was a, um, a gateway. It was a gateway that he was building to enter in through a, what we call a wormhole into another, another dimension, into the third heaven. But to enter into the third heaven, you got to have the right address. And the address is written in the, it's written in the, it's written in the stars. So they understood these things. That's why they look to the stars a lot. When you study um, study ancient history and stuff like that, and they still do today. It's through technology. What we call it today is technology. But it's, it's, you know, throughout history, it's the same, it's the same thing. It's just uh, it's knowledge of how things work. Um, if I'm not mistaken, science in the scriptures is also um, what we call knowledge. And then the Bible talks about science so falsely called. Matter of fact, let's see if we can look it up so I can make sure that I'm remembering that correctly for y'all. Children to whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science. So it's talking about uh, the Hebrew boys. Yes, and you look it up. Um, intelligence or consciousness, knowledge, science, thought. To give you some more um, understandings and it gives you the other, other scriptures where that word is used. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this by, for who can judge this thy people that is so great? As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So then we go to Webster's to bring in another witness. Make sure the context is correct. And boom, there you have it. Science to know. In a general sense, knowledge or certain knowledge, the comprehension or understanding of truth or facts by the mind. The science of God must be perfect. 
So you have, uh, it gives you different definitions depending on how it's applied. But this one right here, it applies to what we're talking about is knowledge. That's why you say it's science so falsely called, knowledge so falsely called. God is, is the great, is the greatest scientist ever. And we are scientists too. So let's look up knowledge just to make sure. Knowledge. A clear and certain perception of that which exists or of truth and fact. The perception of the connection and agreement or disagreement and repungent, repungent, repungency of our ideas. We can have no knowledge of that which does not exist. God has a perfect knowledge of all his works. Human knowledge is very limited and is mostly gained by observation and experience. Learning illumination of the mind. Skill as a knowledge of semen. So you see how it ties in together with what we're talking about. Information, power of knowing. Then, you know, also sexual intercourse. So, um, let me check some real quick before I let y'all go. Let's type in knowledge right here. And first time it appears is in Genesis 2, 9. If we go over here, and the context is talking about what? Cunning awares. So you're, they were made aware of something. We know what they were made aware of, and they give you some more definitions. And it's the same definition that's uh that's used, same definition that I use in regards to science. So you see how it all ties together um in regards to that. So when we go back, just one more time, and through his policy, we see what policy meant. You can go dig deeper into it if you want to. Also, he shall cause craft, he shall cause knowledge, knowledge the not excuse me. The knowledge of how things work. He shall cause science, or I should say science so falsely called, to prosper in his hand. He shall cause technology, which is the same thing as, as craft, just like you have witchcraft, um, to prosper in his hands. We know it's, we know technology plays a major part. We just didn't understand how it correlated with the uh, with the scriptures. We know about transhumanism and the singularity and all the things they're doing with technology. How think about CERN? CERN is the most, as we as we know about, as far as we know, CERN is the most um, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, that they say can recreate the Big Bang, what they call the Big Bang. It is the most technological advanced machine on this planet, on this Earth. Now we know the things that CERN can do. The things they're telling us and the things they're not telling us. And how CERN can open up portals and how they have opened up portals and beings have come through these portals. So now they are peering through the veil. They're ripping holes in the veil, in the spiritual veil that's protecting us. There's a veil that's protecting this physical world from the from what's behind in the spiritual world because they're not supposed to be going behind and the only way you're supposed to go behind it, there is it's through christ so how, how are they doing this they're doing it through technology but they're messing with spiritual stuff so and through his policy he shall cause technology to prosper in his hand because through technology is how they are opening up this spiritual world that's not supposed to be open up the way that they are doing it it's just the way that we perceive it in the physical world is through things like cern the lac and you know saying all these different things but it's all spiritual me making a video right now it's it's a spirit it's spiritual it's just manifested in the way that you see it 
So um, with that being said, I hope that gave y'all some more clarity in regards to how this applies to um, end times. And I hope it gave you a better understanding of the scriptures. And, you know, watch out for technology because it is going to increase. I mean, that's not, nothing I really have to say. Y'all see it. But um, again, you should see how it correlates with the scriptures and end times. But with that being said, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, truth is not debated. It is declared. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If it was edifying to you, be sure to do your part and share it on all your social media outlets, websites, and forums. Your help is greatly appreciated to help fight this war and reach lost souls. Don't forget to like, dislike, and or subscribe. Be sure to also check out our website, stayingfocusedforjesus.life and make sure you check out that resource section, which has a lot of videos that I share and some other stuff, books, um, documents, PDF websites, many, many things. And it's growing daily as I add to it. Also follow us on Facebook for even more content. Staying focused for Jesus on Facebook. <laughs>